June 21st, week four, lecture two, in the morning. Um, so let's see. Um, right, so today we want to talk about. Wait, let me pull this down. Thank you. So today I want to talk about uh, how to interact with uh, servers um, in Android. And you read the uh, material. So let's let me see how far off I was with my estimates. So how many people finished the reading in one hour or less? Uh, like two, two hours or less. Yeah. What, what, what are you doing in two hours? Same time. 1.5. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watching TV. Three hours or less. Now, how many people didn't read it? Now, I said, how long did it do the reading? I said, I said, I thought two minutes per page would be enough. It was about an hour. Uh -huh. I'd, say okay. th I'd say three minutes a page. That's a three minutes a page? Yeah. That's probably so better. you got to understand the code. Yeah. yeah. It's not just I mean, it's not just straight. It's not reading a novel and, yeah. you know, okay, now they're in Luxembourg and <laughs> so on. Right. So it does, so, okay, so three, so let's try to get an estimate about how long it takes per page. So we can estimate this. So three minutes per page, sounds good? Four and a half? Three to four minutes? Yeah, beautiful. That's like beautiful. Three to four minutes? Okay, fine. Uh, how about the how about, uh, how about downloading and modifying the code? It's pretty fast. Right? Yeah. But did it, so there was that. Um, anybody else get tripped up by that translate? Yeah. Bug? Yeah. yeah. Did you get my email? Uh, yeah, but I didn't understand it. Was like probably the assignment, and I was like, oh. Okay, we should yeah. try to go <laughs> retroactively go back and put it in because it's nice to have it working. Yeah. Um, okay. The uh, how about this? Fifteen minutes for this. Is that about yeah. right? Yeah. And how about this one? Fifteen minutes for that. Yeah. yeah. And so, what are some of the uh, examples? Anybody have any creative examples for using these things? And some of there's some obvious uses, like at least for the happy sad where I'm the client. Yeah. Um, I think the big thing that I touched upon, I just read Taha's blog post that he touched upon as well is actually implementing um, like HTML slash CSS for the map view. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we can actually, because the idea is eventually also have a full-fledged website, so yeah. you can really share that code between the two um, and have less redundancy mm -hmm. and really just help the experience overall. So you can have a similar experience both on the application and on the website, so users, when they interact with both of them, they are, aren't really confused, or they aren't, they don't, they feel like they get well adjusted to either either platform. Yeah, that's a really interesting idea. If you can, if there there are certain activities that would fit well in a web view, right? Then you get that that double win. Um, anybody else? How would it be used with the? Uh, oh yeah, what about for the giraffes? Uh, we could have a store where we sell plushies. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Angry Birds does. Yeah. yeah, I noticed what that. that? <laughs> what? Plushies. Plushies. You know, like those little toys or stuffed, stuffed animals. Stuffed toys, cute stuffed giraffes with wild eyes. Yeah, I've never heard of plushies. <laughs> that would just fuck them with them. Yeah. 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 Uh, other than that, probably high scores, putting stuff in web view. I guess if you want to buy the folder, you can have a little button that says that. And it can link you to the website where you can buy the folder. Do they sell those to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You can, you can buy a baby giraffe. Yeah, you, you can buy a baby giraffe from Africa, too. Oh, what about the helicopters? Remote control, control helicopters. Yeah, those, those things. Those yeah. things and what are the ice cream trucks or something? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe you can make a board game, too. Yeah. So you so we can just make a lot of Okay, uh, what about for the uh, Vogue Bowl? Well, I mean, this is kind of, kind of obvious. Uh, we want people to open an external browser and app so they can go to the web page if they want to buy an item. And you also uh, need to have a web service constantly um, getting new items to scroll through. And then um, Violetta said, I didn't actually think of that, that we might use JavaScript to then log in from Gmail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, actually doing the authentication through a web view yeah. is pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, anybody else have 
economists want to make about that? Right. Um, so what I thought we would do is walk through uh, two, of the, two of the programs. I mean, the first one, the, the web view where you start a browser via an intent, I don't think we have to look at because it it's just you create an intent and give it the URL and it goes. It's not really that tricky. Um, but the local browser is interesting because there you've got JavaScript calling Android code, Android code calling JavaScript. It's kind of all mushed up uh, and it's interesting. And the translate has lots of interesting stuff going on. So I want to work through those two sort of closely and have a bunch of questions that we can talk about. Then I want to um, uh, talk a little bit about surfaits. That's the Sahara's here. So I thought I would give you like a 20 minute intro to writing servlets in Scheme. Yeah. Right, so that you can, and actually it's good because it's really simple, it does not scale. Don't do this for like your <laughs> real product. But it's really quick for prototyping. So you can today, I'll show you, and you'll already have accounts and you'll be able to easily do, create a, uh, some kind of rough server thing that you need. Right? At, least, at least for the happy sad folks, I don't know about the other ones. Probably too. Um, okay, and then uh, and if we have time, I'd like to have uh, uh, go over some of the PA2 code examples. I mean, Sahar did a very cool uh, machine learning algorithm to learn how to do the maze. And other people might want to talk about their code. And we just skipped that. We didn't have that chance to let people present their code. So if we have time to do that, then in the afternoon we'll work on incubator projects and discuss the homework for tomorrow. Sounds good? Okay, so let's jump in. Uh, local browser, so let me go to that. Local browser, and it's here, and let's run it. Oh, also, uh, I wanted to mention this very cool thing. Um, if you do the Android SDK, if you look at available packages and third party add ons, uh, you should. I would encourage you to add the third-party add-ons because it's got, uh, for instance, it has the uh, the Galaxy Tab specs. I, so, in fact, I'll use the Galaxy Tab here. Um, so do I have it already? You just want us to add them no. all. What's that? Just add all of the plugins. Add all. I don't even want to do it now because it's a huge thing. It's like it takes it's forever. It's up there. Yeah. It's going to like really mess up the whole screen. Do it at lunch, maybe. But I'll sh I just want you to know about it. Um, so I'll start up the Galaxy Tab here. Start. Launch. And this is nice, because the Galaxy created this, right? So it's got all their stuff in it. And, um, oh, but it comes up too big for the screen. Can you flip it? Yes, you can do Control F11. There you Sideways. go. Sideways. Right, so you can Very flip it. Control F11. Or you could do it upside down. Yeah, so it seem like a in the, in the, design design. In the start yeah. options you can uh, set. What's that? In the start options, before you press start, yeah. you can set a size option. Yeah. But the size, that's right. But I like it. I like it full size. Because like okay. then it's the it's the right uh, density on the screen. Okay. So now that's started. So we can run this thing. Close it. Um, And emulator. I set mine up manually so it asks me manually every time what emulator or, or device I want to use. And while that's going, let's see. It's working. Um, so, yeah. I'll go back here. Yes? Why would it not show up on screen? Is it because it wants to be the actual size of the tablet? Yeah. Well, it wants to, it wants to have, uh, mm -hmm. so the tablet has a certain number of pixels per inch, right. and I think it wants to have the same numbers of pixels per inch on the screen. Gotcha. And this has a higher density than my screen, so it's actually uh, bigger. Um, I don't know if you did it, did it come up yet. Oh, this thing's still starting up. Uh, that's the problem. Oh well, so we'll, look, we'll, we'll get back to it in there. So, uh, first question, uh, web view class, and you can, yeah, you can have your computers open. Um, so the first question is, where is the web view created? There's a web view, right, which gives you access to a browser. So where, uh, where is it created in the Android code? And then, um, 
And where does it appear in the application? Yes, Tom. It's created in the own create. Um, just a second, let me see. So here's the local browser. And here is, uh, no, is that right? Yes, local browser on create. Um, so where is it created? The web view is on view, but you're setting the ID. So you're so right here. Yeah. So actually, that's, uh, it's actually not created here. I think it's created here. Yep. When you set content view, that's what oh, creates right. it. Right. And this is just getting uh, a, a handle for it. Right. So let's go look at the rlayout.main. Okay, so where is it created here? And do we need to, do we need to reverse video? Yeah. Uh, it's outside the menu uh, in the bottom. Uh, let's see. Oh, I guess I can. I can remember this and yes. that. Okay, and this. In the down, down, go. Down, down, down. No, it's in the top, in the down, the top. Down. In the book, it's in the top. Right there, there. Yeah. Right there. Right here, web view. Yes. Right, so it's a web view, and you specify its name, and you specify some uh, some properties. Okay, great. Yes, Sahar? So since the web view and the like normal layout are both fill parent, it just automatically makes them each half as big. Like, how does it know? Because you never specify the sizes, but they come out each um, with half the screen. So it has the, it has the web view, and then it has the linear layout, mm -hmm. which has got three things in it. Right. Um, and yeah, so that was a, that's a question. I'm, um, I think the weight probably makes them equal size, but I don't know. Um, See, did it come? Oh, it's so weird. Uh, thank you. So let's see. Charging. Can't do that. Um, it's probably better to do it on here. System's not, okay, force close. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not working. Okay, so I'll go back in. Okay, yeah, so probably change the weight, and you can play with it and see if it'll work. Um, okay, let's go back. So, content. Okay, where's the content for the web view store? It's got HTML with, uh, and JavaScript. It's in assets. Assets, yeah. It's in assets, right? So let's look at that. Assets. And it's bigger. And, what's that? No. There. It's funny how the... Uh, Double click and tap to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right, so it's in assets. Uh, here's the script for JavaScript. Um, and then HTML and some more JavaScript with the on click. Um, and so let's go back. Just that. Um, okay, what if we wanted to make a multi-page website? Everything goes in assets. Everything goes in assets. So what would we do? Let's make let's make another let's make another page. Um, can I? I'm not really going to get comfortable with this. Uh, can you don't just link it to the other HTML site like you would in regular HTML? You don't you have to. You can just do file new. Um, file. Okay. File new. File. Give me one too. And I'll call this one uh, where in assets test.html. Okay, and so this will be HTML. Oh, oh that's nice. Uh, oops. HTML and then uh, uh, body. Close body, H1. This is attached. Oh. Fine. Really good. Okay. So now let's go. Let's a link it. So how do we? Uh, so how would you think we would link it? A ref. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. a href equals. Let me make it bigger for you. And then wow. slash test dot slash. No. Uh, test test. Test. Go to the test. Okay. And 
seems like it's in here. Oh, no, the only one. Okay, the only one. It's not enough. Give it to me. really good. Oh, we're passing this around now? Yeah, sorry. Who made this? Who made this? Everybody answer. The wife. Did she have a name? <laughs> Chris. Chris. Oh, thank you very much. They're very good. I'll say two out of seven teams are thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so disoriented having it in uh, in reverse video mode. You don't have to if you zoom in it up. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go uh, back to here. Yes, okay, great. So, uh, so let me try to run it again, see if it'll work this time. File, uh, no, no, just run. And, uh, I'll run it on the real device. Okay. And I'll we'll start this guy up. Okay. Technology. Let me go over to here. Um, the age. Dot cam. Color adjusting. Let's see. Okay, so anyway, you can sort of see if I click on go to go to the test, will it work? How many people think it's gonna work? I think it'll work. I don't. I think it'll work. suggesting so if you want you can make web pages what if we had an image would the image where would the image go drawable assets assets are drawable if it went in drawable how would you specify it I think I think it's probably assets it's just in drawable you okay. just go in assets like it says in the book yeah in drawable because then you can make it based on the resolution well it'd be better yeah if you could if in drawable would be better because then you could make it um, yeah, depend on the resolution. <coughs> yeah. So, uh, so I think, well, those are two different things to try. I don't think I want to do it right now. But those are two different things you could try. Uh, let's go back and look at the next question. Uh, okay. So I think we know how to do this. Uh, JavaScript calling Android code. How is it done in this example? Okay. So JavaScript calling Android. So why don't we look at the index.html and where is the code? Make it bigger. Yeah, there, it's still on the other projector. Yeah, you have to switch uh, from projector to laptop. Oh, sorry. And um, 
page. Okay. Okay, so what's going on here? Okay, so we're looking at where's the where's the JavaScript from the JavaScript calling Android code. Method right there, and then you said display JavaScript alert. Um, this one? Oh no, Wait. this one? No, no, the second one. This one? Yeah. Right. Right. So here you've, you've got on click, uh, which is the standard way for invoking JavaScript, um, and here we're calling window .android .call Android uh, from browser call Android from JavaScript. Um, but then, uh, okay, and then let's see how that how does that interact with the uh, with the actual Android code. <coughs> uh, uh, yeah. Did, could you before we go ahead explain for a second what each of those bits of text are? Uh, for in the whole no, issue in, in here. In here. So, so href, right? What's the number sign? I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, number sign usually is, is an indicator uh, of a, uh, a place to jump inside a file. So I'm not sure why they're doing that either. I think you could just get rid of it and have blank. Do it. Do it. I think it's just an old tradition, maybe when the href was required, it's just saying put something in here. Maybe. It could be. Or for something yeah. to show up on the address bar. Yeah. And then the on click is uh, an attribute which specifies some JavaScript code that should be evaluated. When you click on that link, you can also do it for buttons and forms. Have an on click, um, and then this here. So this is JavaScript. The uh, call from browser is the is the tag of the button. So call Android from JavaScript. This stuff here is what appears underlined on the on the screen. And what's the blue hello from browser? And uh, right. So this is uh, this is going to be get this is going to get sent. To the um, to the Android, Hello from browser, and we have to look and see how that happens. Yeah, I'm confused about how JavaScript works. Yeah, uh, you just sort of specified a JavaScript command in HTML, but you never said that it was a JavaScript command. How did it know what to do with it? You mean this right here? Yeah. Well, this is in the on click, so everything in the on click is JavaScript, or is whatever the script language is. Here's the script language. But yeah, you did slash the only reason that. to have the uh, href is to get the hand signal. To get the what? To get the hand signal for clicking the link. The cursor changes to a hand. Cursor changes oh, to a hand. oh. Uh, I see. So, oh, okay. so you take it out and you don't get that. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. So, so the job, So everything inside the on click is JavaScript. So where's the JavaScript on this page? There's JavaScript here in the script where they're defining a function called callJS. Um, and there is a uh, there's JavaScript here in the on click and in this on click. There's no other JavaScript on the page. Yes. So you actually write it in the, the JavaScript in the on click method. Yes. Oh well. Which, which in means the means on click on. attribute value in, in the on click in the. Oh, so everything would be on this page. What's no. Like on what's on the screen right now. That, that's the whole page. Pages. Okay. That's the whole page. Right. Uh, yes. Just a reminder. Um, you don't need to have script language JavaScript at the top if you don't have a function, right? You're just going to call the on That's right. Method, you if, could just call it. That's right. If you didn't hear, if you weren't defining any additional functions, you don't have to say script language equals JavaScript. You can just stick it right in there, and by default, it's going to be JavaScript. OK, and then the other thing is if I had multiple functions, would I just call it script language JavaScript, and then I have each of the functions inside Inside there, yep. You have a whole okay. bunch of them inside there. Yep. Um, so uh, what is this? what do you think this one does? So how many people um, have written a JavaScript program in the last year? Uh, a couple, not very many. Um, so we're guessing anyway. What do you think this thing does? Call JavaScript with an arc. All it replaces the element with the ID replacement, as in that paragraph yeah. with the arc. Yes. So it says get element by ID replace me, 
And element, remember, an element is the thing between two tags. So it's saying, it's, this is, this is uh, based on the document, which is the, the page itself, it is giving you this element, some representation of this element, which is identified by the ID replacement. So you can get any element that way. And then this is saying, uh, look at the inner HTML from that, which is the stuff inside that, and replace it with R. So you can take the contents of any element and replace it with anything else you want. Um, but where is it called? Where is this being called? In, in the header. In the head. It's defined here. Oh, in the Java. Yeah, it's going to be called in the Android code. So from the Android code, we're going to call JS with some stuff and put some HTML in the page from the Android code directly. So weird. Right? <laughs> Uh, and then what is this doing? This is supposedly calling some, and this is supposed to be uh, from the JavaScript making a call to some Android method, but where? Where's the Android method? Again, the Java and why, how, where's the thing specified? What's that? Again, the Java class? Yeah, let's go look. It's the Android version. So let's zip out of here and go back to this one. So where? In local browser? Uh, yeah. yeah. Source. Local browser. Okay, let's here, zoom in. Oh, uh, um, see, this is annoying because I wish I could move this to the other side. Uh, ha, call Android. Right, let's look at this. What's going on here? So here we have private class Android bridge. Uh, and public void call Android handler dot post all this stuff. Let's let's try to figure out what's going on here. Uh, so if we go back to sorry back to uh, in let's see to index.html go. Um, so we're doing window.android.callAndroid. So this must be the, um, uh, the, the place we're making the call. And going back to here, uh, where is it? Local browser. So let's make a change. Um, and what is it doing when we make the call? What happens when you call this Android thing? What is this code doing? It <coughs> creates a new thread and adds it to the handler. It shows the view, or it shows the text of R. It's, you, you, you're given an R, and it, there's a text view, uh, which is uh, in the on, uh, on create. We're getting access to it. So there's a text view, and it's taking R from the JavaScript and putting it in the uh, Android view, text view, right there. Um, but what about, what, what is all of this junk? Why don't they just say, uh, final string r paren curly brace, text view dot set r, set text r? Any idea why there's all this no. junk here? Handlers are weird. <laughs> yeah? As are threads. What, no, why, why do all of this? Hmm. So I'll tell you. <laughs> That's up to anybody want to guess? No. So what happens is uh, this piece of code is, is changing part of the Android view. Um, but the default is there should only be one thread that ever changes anything on the Android view, and that's the user interaction thread, or the UI thread. Um, you should never have any separate thread working on changing the view. If you want to change a view, what you do is you set up a handler, uh, which is defined, where's the handler defined? Uh, it should be created okay. on create, I would think. But no, it's made up here. So you create a handler. What the handler does is it provides a queue where you can put in runnables. And you can take a runnable out and execute it. Um, and in fact, it'll automatically uh, do the execution. So you don't even have to put any of that code there. So when you, when you create a handler, uh, it's associated to the thread that it's created in, 
people can post uh, any thread. You, you, can, you can post from yourself, too, with a delay. You say, I want to do this in 10 seconds. You can post yourself. But any thread can post a runnable to the handler, uh, and then the handler will take it out in that thread and run it. So the idea is if you, you can preserve this, uh, uh, this requirement that only the UI thread modify any of the uh, user interface widgets um, by posting them into the handler. And it has to be done. If you don't do it, uh, these things are not thread safe, and you'll get who knows what kind of problems can just blow up in your face. Yeah? I know that uh, Luba and Fenroy taught us threads in 31, mm -hmm. but I forgot most of it, and I don't understand how threads work in Android at all. Okay, threads? So the thread is, um, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's take a look, because this is important, and, and especially it's, we're going to need it in the next section, too. Uh, so let me zoom back out for a second, um, and talk about what happens when you run this activity. When you start, when you start this thing, stop. And I don't know why it's uh, not paying attention to me. Let me shut it down. Stop. Okay, good. Uh, so when I run this local browser, yeah, run this uh, main page. Cam. Anyway, if I, if I run the local browser, what happened? And here, I did that, and now I'm touching, uh, I'm touching display JavaScript alert. It writes alert from JavaScript down there. Now, I don't know, you can't really see it too well. Uh, you can zoom in. You did that before, it made it very bright. I don't know which one what you did, though. Oh, that's bad. Uh, yeah, that's bad. Turn the lamp on. Uh, it is on. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. That's good? Okay, great. All right. So, uh, so if I call JavaScript from Android, press that. And unfortunately, I put to go to the test there, it hides everything else. Yeah? Okay, so again, slightly back to the uh, href, sorry. <laughs> uh, the reason to, for the href is to get the pointer. The reason for having a hashtag in there is so, so that it doesn't load the page. An empty uh, href is a reference to the base URL, so that it basically loads ah, the page again. And pound means here. Yeah, so essentially if I have an empty page with an unload on the body oh. for alert, if I click, a, click an empty link, it gets activated the unload again. If I kept, uh, Oh, and the number sign means here, here, so it brings you right back to yeah, the current place. Oh, to the oh, great, thank you. That's very clever. Okay, so when you start, when Android starts up this application, uh, it calls the uh, it calls the onCreate method, right? So there's a thread. There's a um, uh, so what is anybody? What's the definition of a thread, or what are threads? Yeah. Threads are basically um, like the processes. So what they are is they just allow for different things that are happening on your computer to be happening. Yep, exactly right. So, so at any given point in time, you've got lots of jobs running. Like here's, here are all the processes running on my computer at the same time. Each of these is its own program, its own memory space, they're running independently, and the operating system just gives them little time slices. You run for two milliseconds, you run for three, you run for one, you run for two, you run for one, it just continually does that. Um, so those are processes, and threads are, are lightweight processes. So typically they, they will share memory, um, and you can start them quickly. You don't have to uh, allocate a whole new big part of memory into a big context switch. Um, so there, uh, there's one thread. When you start this, there's one main thread. And that main thread comes over here. Uh, back to back and forth. 
um, and it runs the onCreate method. So it does the onCreate method, which means that it's going to um, go up and call the parent code, uh, set the content view, um, then assign uh, uh, the view ob objects to these variables, um, you know, execute these things, so on down here, loads the uh, file called Android Asset Index.html into the web view. Then it sets an on click listener uh, to be this on click listener, which um, calls the web view load URL JavaScript call JS. Here's where we're making the JS call. So it sets an on click listener, and then what does it do? And then it goes into sleep mode. So you have the user, user interface thread just sleeping, just waiting, looping. Uh, waiting for some action, and, and it's, it's dormant. And when does it wake up? Whenever you do an on-click listener, uh, or if you do a, an on-destroy, it'll wake up and shut things down, but usually it's just sitting there and waiting for, waiting for to respond to some event. Yes, Sahar? What if you set like three on-click listeners? Does it turn into three separate threads, or is it weak? No, it's, then it's all the same thread. No, we're still in one thread. So when you make on-click listeners, what happens is if there's, there's a, so the operating system maintains a queue of all events. Every touch event, every tilt event, every compass event, all those events go into a big queue. And they just fill the queue. And, uh, and the operating system takes the, filters the queue of events uh, based on the listeners. So any click events will get sent to this thread. And the thread will, will be given that click event, it'll process it by calling this on click view in the current thread. And then when it's done, it'll go back into dormant state. And then get another, uh, another event, another on-click event to do it. And if you have 10 different listeners for click and motion and compass and GPS, uh, they would just correspond to events in the queue that would be given to this thread, which would uh, process them and you know, update the views. Okay, is that clear mm -hmm. how that works? So that the, the single threaded model that's the, the standard way it works, and usually it's just in a dormant state, state and it's driven, it's event-driven. So it's driven by all the events on the queue. All, or the handler. If you have a handler, the handler basically puts uh, runnables into the event queue. So it'll just come out of the event queue. Yes? Yeah, I, I didn't really follow that. Didn't follow that? Okay, so, um, so let's do this. I mean, it's critical, I think, that you understand how this works. So, over there. Whoa, I'm mm -hmm. uh, over there. Fail. Slightly oh, you know what it is? The wire came out. Yes, the wire came out. Uh, what is that? Okay, fine. So let me draw. So, let's do some threading. Uh, right there. So you have some Android code, some program, right? Um, and this is the this is the user code. And here you have the operating system. Hmm. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna close that window shade so that I can do it. I put on the light. That tells yeah. Can you flip on that light? So actually we should go back even further, deeper inside. So inside a computer, you have a CPU and you have memory. Right? Everybody know this sort of architecture? And the CPU basically has a little loop where it says, go fetch me the next, uh, and inside the memory, there's, there's code and there's data. And inside the CPU, it has a little loop that just says, go get me the next instruction fetch it into my instruction register, execute it, then get the next instruction, execute it, next instruction, execute it, next instruction, execute it. It just runs executing instructions. Right? Single thread, single flow of control, right? From at this, at this high level. Um, at, if you look a step higher in the abstraction, the CPU has uh, run some operating system code some operating system code, which is the very low level operating system code, 
And one of the things it can do is switch control for a certain amount of time, five milliseconds or something, to some other piece of code. So it can say, okay, I'm going to switch control to the Android code, Tim's Android code, for five milliseconds. And then there's, that, then there's a, a separate little device going in here, a timer, which after five milliseconds is gonna pop out and kick this job out of memory and go back to the operating system, right? So you have this, this uh, there's always, there's only one piece of code being executed at any time in the CPU, one piece of machine language code. But the operating system is responsible for saying, okay, it's your turn, come in, you've got five seconds, just like in the uh, Congress. They give somebody five minutes to speak, and you kick them out, yeah? Isn't that false now with dual core, quad core, multi-thread? Okay, so this is all, that, here I have one CPU, right? Then you can have multiple CPUs, right? right? So then it's a little trickier, but, but uh, usually a single process will run on one CPU. And yeah, it's a little trickier with the operating system how that's gonna work. Uh, you have an operating system basically running on each of these CPUs and they have to communicate and share the queue. Right. So, but it's still exactly, it's still the same model. Each CPU is running just one instruction at a time. Okay, so is that, is that clear? That should be all that, right? Fine. So, uh, so at the, uh, at a higher level, what's happening is the CPU is at any given time executing a thread. So a thread is a sequence of, is a piece of code, just a regular pe a program piece of code um, that may or may not have its own memory. It might be sharing memory with other threads or it might have its own memory. Um, and uh, it, could be, it could be sleeping. You can sometimes tell a thread to sleep, which says the CPU doesn't need to be executing code for a while. Um, it can be awakened if there's an event. If it's sleeping, it can be awakened and put back in the queue to work. Right? So typically, most, code, most uh, of our Android code has just one, uh, one thread. And what that thread does is uh, it executes the onCreate code, it then executes all the on listeners, and then goes dormant and waits for events. And then if there are any events, the operating system will take the event uh, from the event queue and see if there are any listeners for it, and if so, it'll execute this Android code again. And the thread will run. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just confused as to how there's multiple threads in the Android code. Okay, so in the so in the um, in the PA4 yeah. or the PA3 example I showed, right. what we do is there is um, you can kind of work you uh, uh, in the view. Um, I think the first time you draw, or when no, when the surface is created, you call the surface created thing. It starts another thread, it starts a game loop thread, the game loop thread. So this is a p totally different piece of code, and what it does is it has it has while true, not actually, but while true, uh, draw and update model. Now, right, right. And, that's, and it's just going yin, 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 yin. draw draw on the draw on the canvas, and then and then draw on the canvas, and then post post it to the event queue. So it draws on the canvas, post the event queue, and then this uh, user interface here will wake up, see what has been posted, and draw it actually on on the the canvas that appears on the screen. So this is a back buffer. So what this thing does is it just continually draws onto the back buffer, then updates the model, draws the back buffer, updates the model, continually, it never sleeps. It's never, never sleeping. And when it draws, after it's done drawing, it has a uh, uh, unlock and post, which tells, which wakes up this UI thread and says draw from the back buffer onto the screen itself. Does that yes. happen by the synchronized? So the synchronized thing says there's actually another, there's, there's another piece of code, it's, there's a piece of code over here called the model, model code, uh, that has various pieces of memory, you know, that X, Y, D, X, D, Y, all the disks, all that kind of stuff. Um, and both the, um, both the controller, the controller and the game loop access the model. And it could be the game loop 
uh, posts something here, puts it on the queue, um, and at the same time, someone in the controller some, you know, moves the mouse. And so the controller wants to access the model and change the model, and the game loop wants to up access the model exactly at the same time. Yeah. And that can be a problem. That, that'll, that'll create a, a threat conflict. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't you want to disallow that. So in here, you make sure you call synchronized on the model and synchronized on the model before you touch the model. Okay. Right? And that keeps these two threads from interacting, from trying to change something at the same time. So the model itself is its own lock. The, yeah, the model, you use the model as, the, as its own lock. So if run the model, when it's doing its own run process, run, run is running the thread. Yep, right? yep. It's calling both the game loop and the controller to see if, they're, if they have new stuff. So, uh, so the model is actually not running anything. It's just a piece of code that's called, there are two threads. There's the, there's the UI thread, okay. and there's the game loop thread. That's the view, right? Right, the view, right? There's two threads, the, the UI thread, which is the, the view, and the game loop thread. Okay. And the model is some piece of code which is called by both threads. Um, okay, so it's, so it's no, don't, don't, don't identify thread with code. Thread is, is uh, it's running, it's a process on it. It's yeah. running code. Well, I just want to know where, is it in the UI thread that, that it calls the other things? So what happens is the um, the UI thread uh, the UI thread sets everything up and then goes dormant and then gets awakened only in two cases only when um, when there's a an uh, an event like a post event so it, when when you draw uh, and you un you let go of the lock and post it it takes the back buffer and draws it on the screen so it wakes up then because it's got to take those bits from here and put them on. You're the back buffers when you hit the back button. What's that? When when is the back buffer coming to play? Oh, because there's a there's this thing called a surface. Okay. Right, and the surface is a back buffer. Means it mean a, a, a an outside buffer, a non visible buffer, a piece of screen, a piece of memory you can draw on that doesn't appear on the screen directly. Okay. It's called a back buffer. So it'll be so there. that's what this does, and then when it's done, it's posting and it wakes and it it has to wake up the UI thread to actually copy it from here onto the screen. Also, when the user does any interaction. It calls, there's a listener, a motion listener, which has controller code. So the controller wakes up then. I mean, the UI thread wakes up then. Yep. Is it all, is it all um, worked through by like if statements? Is that how it wakes up? If it wakes up, I don't know, by, the on, by, the, uh, by making it an on click listener or an on motion listener. Right, but, uh, but the game loop. The game loop is never, game loop is just constantly, for all of us running. And, but usually there's a sleep, sleep, five milliseconds. Yeah. So it actually gives a little bit of time, because it's a waste of time to have it go faster than that. This is 200 times a second. Okay. And your eyes just need to look at that. You won't see the difference. The refresh rate, I think, is only 60 times per second anyway. So, um, okay, so there's two threads going on in this case. Okay, because there's a lot, of, we have to do a lot of threading on these devices, so it's really important that you understand Yes, and it may take a while to do it, yeah? So when writing code, when do we know to create, to like write the code to create a new thread? Okay, there's actually, on the Android, there's a really simple answer. The, the, when you're writing your, your program, right, um, you've got a bunch of methods here, um, and they, they're basically just two kinds. There's one uh, that, uh, one, uh, type of method that's called by the operating system, like the on create or the uh, on destroy, on pause, resume, all of that stuff. Um, and then there are also all the listeners, all listener code, on listeners. Mm -hmm. All of that code should be written so that it executes in a very short amount of time. Right? That it, whatever the code does, it, it does its job and it's done. You know, ideally, in you know, ten or twenty lines of code. If it takes any more than that, if it's something that, God forbid, could actually take like a few milliseconds, it should be in a separate thread. Certainly if it's going to take a lot more time. And this runs forever, right? So this absolutely has to be in another thread. But any, really, any kind of job, like it's, if you're going out to a web page to get web content and bring it back, should be in a separate thread. Because otherwise, you push the button, 
And then if there's some delay, you know, sometimes on the well, browser you try to get a page and it takes like 10 seconds, your, your machine will be frozen and it's going to drive users crazy. Yeah. What's one when the computer's broken? Right? It's not the computer's broken, it's just you didn't spawn a separate thread. So the idea is you should spawn a thread, get the result, and then use a handler from that thread, when it gets a result, use a handler, post to a handler so that the UI thread will take that information and put it where it's supposed to go. So that's the whole idea behind the handler. The thread, it's going to take some time, so the thread goes off and does its work, it doesn't really matter how long it takes. When it's done, it wants to put the answer back here on the, uh, somewhere in the UI thread, so it posts to the handler some runnable, which you know, as changes the text field or the button or something. Okay, yeah. Is it returning handler? It's, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it's done, but you have a handler object created here in this thread. And then That's any other thread, if it has the handler, can post a runnable to it. Uh, so here you say uh, handler dot post uh, new thread da 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 da. Yep. Is there are there three threads in this situation? This one too. Did you say controller was a thread? No, no. Controller is is some code that runs in the UI thread. Because whenever controller, what happens is the controller is we do set on motion listener, we do surface, which is this. This thing in here that actually has the little cubes drawn on it, right? Yeah. Surface dot uh, set on motion uh, event listener controller, right? So the controller is the is the event listener for this. That means whenever whenever the operating system sees one of these events, it calls from the UI thread. It calls the controller code, right? So what happens is this thread is just responding to events. It's purely event driven. And it's calling the controller code. The controller code will call model code. But it's all one thread. And this other thread sitting here just doing something down the loop. Right? Yeah? Is there a way to do A runnable is a piece of code that can be executed in a thread. Yes. So you create a, a runnable is an interface that just means whatever uh, class you have has to implement the run method. Right? And then when you say if you create a you can create a thread, but there's a thread constructor where you pass it a runnable. And then when you say for that thread x, say you say x dot start, it creates another thread. And runs and executes that run, that run method for the run. And then when the thread, when this run method completes, when it's done, the thread dies, the thread disappears. Or in this case, in this case it will. It'll. It's, it's actually it wasn't. It wasn't true. It was while running. And so when you set the running variable to false, this loop is over. The game loop is done. The thread disappears. Um. Yep. I have like a quick uh, website where it helped me clarify like the use of uh, thread and the runnable class. Oh, okay. So maybe I could post that. Could you post it to the link? The yeah, uh, I'll the, do that. The class link? It simplifies everything. It's kind of what we did in Taiwan. The consumer, producer consumer program, and it's, it uses like some very uh, simple analogies that you can refer to to make sense of what's going on. Okay, that would be great if you could do that. Because this is really critical. We'll, so I think we need to take a break for five minutes. Then we're going to come back and um, look at the Translate app, which uses lots of threads. Um, and you're going to have to use threads. You have to use threads when you're connecting with the server. You just you can't do it otherwise. You're have, your app will just be horrible. It'll just freeze all the time if you don't. Right. Okay, so break time.
Yeah. Uh, is your gravity When you get it from the so user, thing to the user degree, mm -hmm. you immediately you change it that's the key. and then use that one. The function. In fact, we can have a hamburger on this thread. So right. That's what I was wondering. Right. 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 And yeah. when, this, when this thread starts up, the hamburger is invoked, and if we, anybody close to it, it'll get called. Yeah. It'll, it'll, um, does it, yeah. When does it get called? I mean, if this thing is just moving, it's going to break. It's going to break. 